Hi, my name is Alan Willis. I am a recovery consultant. I am proud to be telling you right now that um, I have an awesome interview on the Prosperity T uh, TV show. And I would like you to join me and yeah, learn something new. Learn how to change your life. Change your thoughts, change your life by the one and only Mr. Prosper. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the recovery consultant himself. Alan, how are you doing, my man? I'm pretty good. How are you, Prosper? Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking your time with us this morning. Um, folks, if you're watching this, you might be going through some sort of societal pressure that has uh, maybe put you down and made you an addict of something. I want you to know that today we're going to try and help you get out of that rut and work with somebody who is seasoned and somebody who actually knows how to get you out of that um, addictive lifestyle. Okay. So there's a lot of benefits that you might have in working with a recovery coach that would help you or even your loved ones um, who have a sub, you know, a substance issue. Now with the right recovery coach, they can help you navigate through various you know, addiction treatment systems. They can motivate you and engage you in some sort of program so you can have a life that's comfortable and enjoyable. And as you know, if you're working in this whole entrepreneurial um, you know, phase, you might be going through a lot of stuff that might make you want to indulge. Now, that's the reason why we've called in Alan and he's going to explain to us how he works and how he too has recovered and how he can put you on a journey so you can be, do, and have a life that's profitable and enjoyable. And enjoyable. Now, Alan, did I say that right? It sounds, sounds great. It's a, a great introduction. Great stuff. And, no, um, sorry? No, that's all right. A lot of people are going through a hard time in life at the moment. And they would just maybe um, settle for a drug or some sort of substance that will alleviate the pain. Now, what is it that you can say to people that are going through a hard time and they're looking for a way to quit? Well, it's, it's a good one because uh, a lot of us do have extra stresses from work, family, um, social uh, environments, the, our, our environments in general. Uh, I guess one of, the, one of the easiest ways to start uh, dealing with the, the outside pressures is taking some time out um, to relax, be ourselves, unwind from, from the day before we go home and have that beer or um, have a line of coke or whatever it is. Just take some time out, um, use some mindfulness techniques, uh, a bit of meditation, just there's, there's more to life than, than a beer, rum or coke, if you know what I mean. Uh, a lot of us struggle with life in general, the traumas from our childhood all the way up. Some, some have some really cool coping mechanisms and we never actually dove down the, the rabbit hole into addiction. Uh, others, not so much. And, and we tend to use substance abuse and, and substances to hide, hide the pain uh, and cover our emotions, our stresses, etc. So it's finding cool techniques um, and strategies to help you deal. Uh, with those stresses yeah, and traumas on a daily basis, basically, or the association to those traumas on a daily basis. Understandable. Now, Alan, you just brought up a very interesting thing there. Some people might be going through all of those things and not realize that they're actually addicted. How can somebody spot that their, their loved one or themselves are actually addicted to some substance? I guess um, to define yourself as addicted, it's, it's a great question. Like how, how do we know that we're addicted? Most of the time we hit rock bottom and someone around us in our families uh, 
helps us helps to pick us up or we realize I can't handle what I'm doing my life needs to change so um, for a, a large uh, percentage of people they they wake up out of that they they take it and um, it motivates them to create change some not so much the what you would class as the addicted person um, sometimes falls deeper into the addiction uh, the pain, the hurt, and everything that comes up drives the, the need to take more substance. I guess um, for families uh, involved in a situation like that, it's um, love, like being there supportive. Yeah, don't... Um... Now, now, Alan, obviously by you going, you know, by becoming a recovery coach, you must have gone through... Um, something that has prompted you to want to help other people. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and you know what has led you to want to start helping others on their recovery journey too? Certainly. Um, I guess to to start, I I was thrown on a, a large amount of dexamphetamine when I was seven years old, so I almost had that um, conditioned chemical hook or however you want to put it from a young age. By the time I was in high school and not forced to take that, my my behavior, my life was out of control. I was a rebel without a cause. I didn't know who I was, who I wanted to be. And I soon fell into the, the drug lifestyle, basically using different substances to party. Initially it was to party. And that became a week, weekly thing, then almost an everyday thing. Then as with most, we, we become, we fall into a deeper, darker place and I was kicked out of home and, and the drugs got worse, the associations got worse, the activities, my environment got worse as a whole. Uh, I attempted rehab several times and never, never learned who I was, um, never learned techniques to find out who I was. I, I found some of the, the rehab programs interesting. I, I, I could never grasp the whole 12 step program and, and the limiting beliefs and, and bit like having to call myself an addict when I knew the power in like not believing that, if you know what I mean. So my journey took me in and out of rehab. I fell back in, in and out of um, substance abuse several times. Um, the last time was I had, had a, a close member of my family die and and I lost my kids um, and my, my, my partner due to my behaviors and, and my drinking habits, etc. Uh, so I lost the, the comfortable environment that I was staying in and, and that shot me back into um, loneliness, fear of abandonment, a lot of different things come up in my life and, and I searched out for the same old comfortable place that I was so used to and then found myself with an ice pipe in my hand and and running daily from the emotions, the pain, the trauma that, that had, I had been going through my whole life. And it, it didn't take long. I think um, that first day, the fact that all the pain was gone, I, I felt so good that I just kept doing it. And after a little while, that created more problems and I was in a vicious cycle. Uh, it took trying to make, uh, commit suicide to um, wake up and seek help and spent a little while in a institution um, getting my head back in the right place and and then soon after that I, I, I went back to rehab. Um, that, that wasn't the end of the journey. I, I ended up getting kicked out of that rehab because with most people, I won't say most people, a lot of people go to rehab and it's like, Oh yeah, you're an ice cook, or you're this, you're that. You're you're higher up the chain than we used to be in in the game. So most, a lot of people, especially with drugs, have to find ways to make money, and we we start thinking it's cool to climb the chain in whatever anti-social groups we're in. And um, I found that I I started making friends with um, like cooks and people higher up the chain, so I could essentially get cheaper products, um, so fell back into a, a bad circle of friends and associates and fell back into addiction. Uh, 
then then I got help one day um, by by a good friend. He suggested that I go to a program that had kickboxing and 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 started to teach you how to change your habits, etc. So I I come up to Coffs Harbour and um, started my journey at a rehab. Uh, Going, going back a little bit, when I, when I was in a homeless shelter in Sydney, the same one that um, this guy told me um, about this rehab, I started, um, I was using a fair bit of ice and there was a lot of new guys coming through, young guys, like they shouldn't have been there. Life, life couldn't have been that bad to be where, where they are. And if it was, it, it was a shame. So I started trying to stop them from falling into the same habits as I was. I didn't want them wrecking their life like I believed my life was. So I started giving them tips, tricks. I, I was running around like a drug and alcohol counselor, but off my face on ice. So it was kind of the epiphany, look, I, I'm meant to do something more than I'm doing right now. And that was a part of the decision to get help. And and that, was, that, was, that was really profound, man. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's such a story right there. And would you know at what point did you actually then realize, no, this is it. I really need to clean up and start helping other people. And then, um, yeah, you started doing your recovery uh, coaching. I guess um, in, in rehab, I, I was having trouble coming to terms with the stuff they're teaching me. Nothing made sense. The... I didn't understand why the the steps and stuff were so toxic to to my own beliefs. I I read a lot of different personal uh, personal development books and understood the the power of the mind. Yet I'm going to a program and calling myself an addict or an alcoholic three times a week. It it in itself was toxic. The the limiting beliefs I learned during that time were toxic. So. I started searching for more. When I had spare time, I was watching YouTube videos by like Bob Proctor, um, many, many others, Joe Vitale, uh, Napoleon Hill, and started developing the belief. Then I found a life coaching course um, involving NLP uh, in rehab, and I talked the rehab into letting me pay for the course and start my journey there. And it was, during that process like the, there was obviously a spiritual awakening somewhere along the line and i was like yes i know what i'm supposed to do i feel it i've got the passion inside this is what i want to do so i signed up and every day is a blessing like we all have our challenges it's how we deal with those challenges that define who we are so it's changing our mindset changing our life stepping up to that next level and that and that's what i love it's 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 funny we we get taught so much in in early recovery that can be so negative to our mindsets but having that belief that we can recover allows us to step up and and take control of our own lives like they say you cannot recover you're sick for life that's just a belief it's just a belief that you've got the disease of addiction this at ease there's there's two sides to that uh, two two sides to that coin. There's dis at ease. There's at ease. You never have to stay in that one area. You you can decide which where you want to be. Level it off. Take control of your life. So, great stuff. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing this. And obviously, since you've been through this, and now you're designing your own totally different way of approaching this recovery can you just walk us through your your process and how revolutionary this is going to be because as you say the traditional way is disempowering and it just keeps people at disease how is your process different and how is it going to change the lives that you intend to change well i guess first i'd like to touch on um the the book, um, The Sober Truth. Uh, in it, they mentioned that um, the 12-step re recovery program has a success rate of between five and 10%. And they also cover the fact that this, there's about five or 10% of people that recover from drugs or alcohol that don't use any program at all. So there's the same percentage. So my dream is to help the 90% of people that 
that program or that set of um, the, the, that modality won't won't actually help to change. So my my dream and what I've been seeing, what what has happened to me is using different uh, strategies, techniques, and modalities to change our beliefs about who we are, change our self image, and become the people we were supposed to be. We, we weren't born into addiction. We weren't born with these labels and these beliefs. So it's, it's using uh, tools around neuroplasticity, NLP, life coaching, and many, many more to create the change within you to become who you were meant to be, who you want to be. By setting goals about what you want to achieve in life and who you want to become, you, um, I help them start to draw that using many different principles and, and laws like the law of attraction into their lives. So it's, it's amazing. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Alan. Now, you know, obviously somebody might be watching this and as we alluded to earlier on and, um, uh, you know, the, the, the great Alan has been sharing that you might not be realizing that the area or the environment you're in is toxic or the people that are around you are leading you um, astray in as much as you would then, um, you know, start succumbing to some sort of substance abuse. And it's prevalent here in Australia. So if you might be going through um, some, you know, escapade that you think, oh, it's only, you know, a phase um, there's people like Alan that can actually help you and motivate you so that because they've been there They know the dark side of it all and um, you know how you um, Can recover before it gets too bad now Alan people might have been watching this video right now and they you know um, Maybe in that situation or they know somebody that you could help. How can people get a hold of you? Well, um, currently on Instagram as mr. Alan Willis I have a Facebook group newly set up uh, called New Age Recovery Support Group. I'm also on Facebook in general under Alan Willis and would love to connect. Okay. All right. So thank you so much, Alan. This has been phenomenal. And thank you for sharing your story. I know you came from a, um, a place of you don't want to be reminded of things like that, but it's people like you that help other people that don't realize that they might be going through some sort of, um, you know, dark side because it looks good, feels good. That's the reason why people do it but not knowing the replications and the, you know, what they're putting themselves through. A lot of entrepreneurs are trying to make their businesses work. So they want to enhance their performance. They want to enhance um, the way they're doing things. And yes, it is obvious. Some people are actually succumbing to substance abuse, right? So as you have noticed um, in our talk with um, Alan, it is paramount and very essential to be careful of what you put into your brain, the environment that you're always around. And also if you have already um, got an addiction and you know about it, or your loved one is addicted, you are going to need the services of a recovery coach. They will help you and your loved ones get rid of that substance issue, okay? So the right um, recovery coach can help you navigate through various addiction treatment systems. Like what Alan said, his um, way and method is empowering instead of the traditional disempowering uh, methods. Thank you so much, Alan, for your time today. And um, I really hope whoever has been watching this and is also an addict is on their way to quitting. Much love and thank you. Thank you so much, man. You've done this before, haven't you? Oh, starting to. <laughs> is that, is that um, what you'd like or...?